Thank you for joining. This demonstration will show you how to set up an event-based schedule which will monitor for changes in a specified database. If there are any changes, then the event-based schedule will send an email to a specified individual. So first, we will select the event-based schedule from our list of possible schedules. It will then bring up a wizard that we can start making the schedule. We'll pick a folder for the schedule to be stored in. We will select the Demo Schedules folder. We will then pick a name for the schedule as well. We will describe it if necessary. And then we can use keywords to make it searchable using smart folders. Click Next. Next, we have to establish the condition, and this condition will determine whether the schedule will run the particular task or report. If you click Add, you then have a certain number of conditions that you can use um, that will determine the execution of the schedule. If you select if a database record has been modified, we can then name the condition and then we will determine whether we want it to be true or false. If the database record is changed equals false, that means if that database record isn't there, we will then execute the schedule. If we were to set it to true, then that would mean if that record does exist, then we will execute the schedule. In this particular case, we want it to be true. Next, we need to select the DSN of the database that we will be monitoring for new orders. You would authenticate to it and click Connect. We need to build a record selection query. Click Build. Using the record selection query, we will decide what records that we would like to monitor for in our table and exclude any records that we don't want. Click Connect to connect to the database once more and you will select a particular table in the database that you want. We can then parse out anything that we do not want. For example, if you only want the, us to monitor for areas where the region is equal to Great Britain, click the down arrow and then click parse. You'll get this message here and click yes to review the results. And we will return you the results of the query indicating uh, all the records that we have found based on that search criteria. If you don't want any records, if you want us to include all records found in the table, don't include anything in that box. Just click parse, select yes, and all of the records that show up in your table will be ran for. Once you're satisfied with the results, click OK. And then click Next. We have to select the key column that uniquely identifies each row. And we have other options. We can detect records that have been deleted or inserted. And we can decide whether we only want it to match certain records that have not been modified within a certain amount of time. Click Next. All right, we've now established our condition. So if we click OK, we can review the condition that we've created here. We can create more than one condition that will determine whether the schedule will execute or not. If you were to select all, all of the conditions that you have listed here must be met in order for the schedule to be executed. If you were to select any, that would mean any of the conditions would have to be executed, would have to be present in order for the, the schedule to be executed. Click Next. Now we have to decide what would we like to happen off the basis of this condition. We could execute a new report in which we will select a report for exporting and formatting. We can execute an already existing schedule or nothing at all and do a custom task. In this particular scenario, we'll select none. 
click next. The software has an element of self-healing, so you can decide whether the intervals at which the schedule could be treated as an error and how often you would like it to retry. You can also set up a custom hours of operation. So you can decide a particular time period in which you want the schedule to run. Give it a name. And then pick the particular timing time frame that you would like the schedule to be operational and to monitor for records. Click Next. Now we need to select a custom task. Off the basis of an event-based schedule, you can execute any number of tasks, uh, assuming that you have met the criteria that you have set in your condition. In this particular case, we need to send an email notification. So we're going to select a custom task for email and simply drag it to the right and drop it. It will now bring up a window where we can type up our email. And then if this was a static notification to a customer or to anyone, say an administrator, you simply type in the email address. If this needed to say go to a record in your database, in our case we want to notify the customer when an order is present, we can use what's called an event-based insert. With an event-based insert, we can interrogate the contents of the table that we're monitoring and yank out the fields and insert them in the email address field or anywhere we like within the software. In this case, we want to email the corresponding customer if their order appears. We'll select the particular field that we want drag it to the to field and drop it. And we'll continue our email as usual, giving it a subject and also creating a message. You can also customize the message by adding event-based inserts as well. For example, if you want to customize the greeting, say by using the customer's name, if that field exists within your table, you can pull that out using an event-based insert too. You'll know that it's an event-based insert based on this language here. Add a comma for proper grammar, and then continue your message. Once you're satisfied with your message, click OK. Your task will show up here, and you're free to add any further tasks to accommodate that schedule. Click Next. You can decide an execution flow if you are running schedules along with this by executing a custom task first or having the custom task go last. Once you're finished and you're satisfied with your schedule, click Finish. If you were to check the particular demo schedules folder, you will see that the schedule is there and you'll see if you right click on it, you can click on properties to review the settings and change them if necessary. You can also execute the event based schedule on demand by right clicking and going to execute. So we've just showed you how to set up an event based schedule which will monitor for changes in the database. And if there's any changes within that database, we can then have a custom task sent to notify the user of the change. Thank you very much for joining.